Hello and welcome to Real Person Reviews. I'm Sam and I am a real person. Certainly not some kind of robot or something. And today I want to talk to you about Mega Man Battle Chip Challenge for the Game Boy Advance. Funny story about this one. Uh, this is a game that I got uh, along with uh, some other games and I was just like looking and I was like, oh shit, hey, there's, there's the first Mega Man Battle Network. Because it's, it's a small game, and I, like, I saw it, and I like to sit and buy out the, the game art, and I thought it said Mega Man Battle Network, because it's the same font, and it's the same symbol on it, and I thought the really small text on it said Battle Network, because I probably saw the word battle, and there was no number next to it, so I thought it was the first one. And it wasn't until like, I got it home, and I was like, oh shit, this is not Mega Man Battle Network, this is, this is, uh, this is like a spinoff. Uh... But I was like, well, fuck it, I already have it, I'll try it out. Um, and, uh, well, there you go, it's a spin-off of the Mega Man Battle Network series, so hopefully you're somewhat familiar with that, um, and possibly when I post this I'll have already talked about some of those, or possibly not, we will see. Um, anyways, uh, the other stuff up front is that, uh, this, uh, uh the, the, there's a written review you can look at before or after or instead of this video review at hubworldhq.com or linked in the description below, and, uh, actually I think that's pretty much it. Um, other than there's a lot to talk about, like, this game has a lot of technical shit in it, it seems really confusing, but I'm gonna do my best to explain it, and, uh, you know, it's been a little while since I played it. I hope I'm going to explain it pretty well. And if I don't, when you play it, you will understand it. And if you don't play it, I understand. You're on the same page, you following me? Good. So, the story here doesn't really matter. I'm not going to I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. The basic story is stupid. You're just doing this competition for your fighting other like net battlers in this new kind of net battle. So basically, it's some kind of weird excuse to do uh, a game that is like the Mega Man Battle Network series, using a lot of the same assets, same characters and chips and art, and a lot of similar things from there as the backdrop, but playing differently to make it not a canonical like part of the story that matters. Making it this this it's making it its own thing to be played differently, um, and uh, the kind of game that it is. Honestly, it's probably something like a... It's kind of like a deck-building game, a deck-building card game mixed with a slight... I guess, like, a very slight RPG element. And, like, you're getting more stuff and building your deck, and as you go along, you're able to put more things into your deck and whatnot. Um, but... Basically, it's like a card game strategy deck building game, uh, I guess, and, um, I mean, there's turn-based playing, so I guess people, I, I see why you might call it RPG, but it's very, very light RPG, if at all, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it, uh, <laughs> about that. So, how it's played is kind of confusing to explain, but, okay, so, you have a deck full of these chips. Um, think of them basically as, like, your cards in a card game. Um, and, uh, you go and battle people, usually in these, uh, series of battles, one after the other. Um, when you start the game, you actually can pick, uh, a character, and there are, what, like, six characters or something? I don't know, six characters? Whatever, there's characters. I only played as one, it doesn't matter. You play as a character, and the character you pick will determine their bit of story that happens in the game, you know, between the actual gameplay, which doesn't really matter that much or affect the actual gameplay. And then there's, um, also it depends, basically it determines what your starting, uh, your starting character is, or your net navy, which is basically the character you're using to fight all your battles. Um, and, uh, so there's this idea of the program deck. Uh, which is basically, you pick a certain set of chips to go into your program deck. Um, the first chip slot is always your navy, um, so the character you're using. You can switch between them if you get different navy chips, and basically what that does is it determines what your, um, things like your HP, your memory, which, um, 
determines how many, uh, like how big the total memory of like the, the chips you have because each chip takes up a certain amount of memory when you put it into those slots for use. So if the number, you know, of a stronger chip is usually higher uh, and you have to balance out some of that stuff. But basically, yeah, if you exceed that number, you mean you can't. So, as, you know, that's kind of like you're limiting. Do you want more chips that are lower numbers or less chips that are higher numbers? That kind of idea for planning and strategy. Um, oh, I'm just overwhelmed trying to think of all how much I have to explain here. Basically, so that's like your character. And also, whenever your character gets to attack at the end of the turn, after resolving all of the ships, your character attacks and you... The attack you do is depending on which, you know, your net navy, your character, what they are. Um, some some characters have certain different effects for each of their attacks and different damages. So, uh, and sometimes elements come into play as well. So there's some of that with weaknesses and whatnot. Um, next up, uh, let's talk about the way the program deck works. Is that after that there's a split. Um... Basically, the way it's displayed on the screen is that there's basically these column. There's actually uh, three columns: uh, a column of two boxes, a column of three boxes, and a column of four boxes. So the column of the first two boxes are whichever one. Of the, basically, these are like dice rolls. They're branching paths, kind of. So when you start off, um, you can put all the stuff in whatever boxes you want, provided it'll actually be able to fit with your memory. Then when it starts off, basically. It goes through a branching set of lines from uh, from there, and it picks one of the first two, one of those first two boxes, and then from there it splits it off, picks one of the other boxes, and then from there it splits off, and picks one of the other boxes. Meaning that the ones that are closer to you uh, are going to be picked more frequently, and have a greater chance of being picked, where the ones that are further out have less chance of being picked and are usually picked less frequently. Uh, so, like uh, for example, if you pick the if it picks the top box right away, then whatever is in the in the next column, the top and the middle box um, could be picked. Whereas uh, if it's the bottom box, it would be the bottom and the middle box that could be picked. You get the idea how branching paths work with that. Um, and I mean, that's essentially you know, it's, it just kind of goes like that at random every time your turn starts. It picks those, and then you start going. And whoever goes first depends on the chip. Certain chips are faster or have different like priorities than other chips. So it depends on that, what you've picked, what your opponent's picked. But basically, you'll run through those in the line. Uh, and um, how it works is, whichever one is closer to you will be used first, um, I believe. Actually, no, it's the opposite, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, it has been a while since I've done this. I think it's the ones closest to you. Yeah, no, that's what it is. Okay, sorry. So yeah, it's the ones that are closest to you are used first. So you use whatever one is there in the first column, then the one in the second column, then the one in the third column. And then uh, after all that is resolved, you will attack. And depending on who attacks first and whose chips are first, yeah, like I said, it's about speed, it's about priority, and it really depends on what chips you use. So it's kind of a back-and-forth turn-based turn thing with that. You kind of just watch that play out while it's happening, for the most part, except for these two other spots, which are slot-in spots, which basically... Um, as turns go by and you get more turns, you build up this this meter, which is your slot in meter. And the higher that is, the better your chance of actually succeeding in a slot in. And um, slot in is you can put it any time between turns, and it'll have you slot in, and then you can use that chip, um, you know, out of like just just right then, like pretty much. After your opponent resolves their turn, or before you do your turn, something like that, it kind of de you know, it kind of depends on the weird, sort of undefined rules that happen in there, and then you can throw that in as like kind of a last ditch, you know, I'm in a bind, I need to throw this in here, kind of thing. And um, uh, you could also, of course, if it's a percentage thing, so if it's not 100%, you have a chance to fail, your chip is wasted, and your slide has failed, and you get two of those uh, every match. Um, then there's the idea that basically there are some attacks that can attack all chips. Uh, so like a lot of attacks are pretty basic and they just hit characters um, and they do damage to them. Some attacks can attack characters and hit chips. So like there's such a thing as like have, if they have the word add next to them, it means that um, it will hit the next chip for that much damage as well. So if you hit someone for 20, it's like add 20, 
if you hit someone, uh, basically your opponent, you hit them for 20, and then you'd hit one of their chips for 20 uh, in their deck. Um, and it's always the front one that was picked. Um, so it's whatever was in that... Th so if they had something in that third column that's out there, you're, we would do extra 20 damage to the one from that third column. Um, if there was nothing in that, uh, or it didn't select anything, if they selected no chips, it wouldn't do any extra damage. Um, if there's nothing in the third column, but they selected something in the second column, you could hit damage to that. And so each chip has its own HP and can be destroyed, making successive turns easier for you if you can take out their chips, which typically means you'll do less damage with the ones you're doing the actual damage with in the first place because they do damage to chips also. So it's more things to consider. Again, it's all a lot of strategy and thinking kind of stuff um, and a lot of planning. Uh, there's also ones that have the word all next to them, which means that basically they can hit all chips in the deck. These are usually pretty weak, but they'll hit everything that they currently have selected um, to kind of chip away at those chips. <laughs> um, and there's some other stuff too, like there are some uh, chips that like have your character moving forward, some chips, and they need to like have space to do that. So if you take out the floor, you can take out, like, the, the, the... They can't, like, touch you because there's no floor there. They can't jump over the gap with it. Or stuff like guard chips, where they can block attacks. Some attacks can pierce guards, and some attacks can do damage, even though they've hit the guards and still hit other things as well. It, again, it's, it's, it's a lot of things to, to think about, and it, it, the more you play, the more you start to understand what the words mean, what the things do. Um, certain ships have different accuracies as well, which means the likelihood they're going to hit. So some ships are pretty strong, but don't necessarily hit all that often. Um, and that can be some, somewhat of a trade-off. Um, and of course, if your chip is destroyed, it, you don't have to select a chip. If, uh, if you're going through the tree and it selects blank spots, there's just no chip there. And then the other person will get their turn in if they do have a chip in that slot, because you're, they're going unopposed. Um, and uh, that kind of determines the flow of the battle and how that goes. There's also healing chips, and uh, I'm sure there's a few others that I'm forgetting that are some kind of special types, but there, there's basically those are the kind of chips you'll be dealing with. Um, and uh, also sometimes, like I said, there's elements. So some navvies have elements to them. Um, and if, uh, it's like uh, if you're fighting a fire navvy and you use a water chip on them, that'll do... Uh, double damage, or maybe it's not double damage, it's like extra damage, um, it does like extra damage, um, yeah, it just adds more, a little bit more, I think it's like 10 more or something to them, and then of course that effect applies to any extra thing, so it's like if it's an add effect or an all effect to the, your attack, um, it would apply that to the rest of the, the rest of the chips as well, because the damage you dealt was based on how much you did to the navy itself, um, and, uh, of course, like I said, after all those attacks resolve, um, just a quick note, after all those attacks resolve from all those chips, then you attack, um, with your basic at the end of it. Um, okay, and then, like, uh, or, like, you know, if you're, uh, a wood type, uh, navvy, and you use your attack, uh, but your, your navvy's attack on, uh, an electric navvy, you'll actually kill them, or not kill them, necessarily, but you'll do more damage to them. Uh, sorry, you do more damage uh, because of again type advantage. So they have some of those. Um, they're also like basically neutral types, which don't have any inherent advantages or weaknesses. Also, there are different um, panel types as well that factor into it. So like uh, there are if there's like grass type panels and you use a fire move, it'll do um, extra damage to uh, to the opponent. Uh, and if you're doing it to a uh, a, a grass based opponent. Um, then you'll do an even more, you'll do even more extra damage because of the opponent's type as well. Um, also, usually when that happens, you fire on a grass stage, it destroys the grass stage. But when a, a, a grass uh, opponent is on a grass stage, it'll actually heal over time each turn. Um, and uh, if, say, if there's like a metal stage, um, if you use a, a an electric move on a metal stage, it does more damage. But if you use a grass move on a metal stage, it'll actually, um... If you use a grass move on a metal stage, it'll, uh, turn the entire stage into a grass stage. If you, uh, are on a lava stage, it'll do damage to you, uh, 
after each um, after each turn, unless you're a fire navy. Uh, also, uh, a water move will get rid of the lava stage, and then there's a uh, I'm trying to think what all the stages were. There's another there's an ice stage where it's harder to hit things unless you're a water navy, and then your accuracy is fine. Um, as far as I know, you can't really ditch the the stage with the type thing, but again, electric moves will do more um, to enemies on uh, an ice stage. Um, maybe it's just ice enemies. I'm, I'm actually I'm unsure about that. I have to look that one up again. <laughs> and then there's poison stages, which just do damage over time, uh, and there's no real type thing about it. They're just uh, they're just those stages. Um, so the, the, there's maybe there's maybe something else I'm forgetting, but basically yeah, there's different stage types which go along with the elemental uh, strengths and weaknesses, and and, and uh, uh, that's basically the gameplay though is doing those, p picking your chips, picking what you want for your slot, and knowing when to slot in, and then watching a lot of the turns uh, resolve. A lot of it's about picking which things you want for your given opponents, and you can switch your chips out between each battle, but only from your currently selected folder. You can have multiple folders, and maybe you want a different folder for different kinds of competitions, but there's essentially all these different challenges as you go along. You keep unlocking more, and um, they're, they're, just, they're really just sets of battles. Mostly, um, there's a lot of themed ones, like a bunch of battles around certain elements or certain um, types of play, and sometimes they're just really tough, um, especially near the end of the game. The last few actually get pretty, uh, based on just being really difficult and being longer and longer, um, series of fights. Um, there's a chip store you can go to to buy packs of random chips so you see what you get because you get winnings for beating uh, people in the in these battles. There's uh, uh, some other, other like tournament stuff for you to like, set up a tournament. I didn't really understand how to do the tournament though that well. It was weird. Um, and then there's like uh, just Battle Street where you can just go and fight people and you just you just fight some certain number of people there, um, random people, and then try to beat them. And, uh, uh, I mean, you can play with other people, but I don't have the connectivity to really do that. So, it's largely just that. It's building your deck, trying to get new chips, trying out different things, finding out what you want in your deck, what you want in your program deck, which you're using against your different opponents. Uh, trying to beat all these different battles, getting more memory as you go along, and then being able to put in more chips. Um, and, uh, you know, strategizing and, and, and just basically doing a lot of that until the end of it. Um, you could try to collect all of the different kinds of chips, I suppose, if you wanted to as well. There's, like, it keeps track of the different ones you have, and that's pretty much the game. Um, and I'll say, it's pretty fun. Um, for what it is, it's definitely really, really addictive. At first, it's very off-putting because you're like, holy shit, it just kind of explains it, and, you, and I'm like, I don't understand what this game wants from me. Um, but the amount of strategy that's in there, while it's all pretty simple and you can kind of adjust for it, um, I think it does a good job of keeping stuff really interesting, keeping you on your toes, and even if it's just that slotted thing, it does kind of keep you invested of, like, you kind of have to watch the battles. You can't just, like, auto through all of them. Because you kind of want to watch those battles and just see, like, okay, like, what is killing me if I'm losing? What am I, what's going wrong? Is it just bad luck, or do I need to tweak something? Is there some way I can get around this or do this more effectively? Um, and you can try out all these different kinds of strategies and see what works and what doesn't. It's, 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 a uh, I don't know, it's, it's very, it's very, uh, Addictive, I guess, in the nature of like, I won this, so I'm gonna do one more battle and win this, and I got these new, new chips, I'll put these in, I wanna try these chips out, try these different characters out, and try this out. Um, uh, so it's got a lot of that going for it. Also, I like the aesthetic, I think it worked well enough for like, if you're a fan of the Battle Network games, this, uh, while the gameplay is a lot different, you might like that they have some of the characters coming back in here, and a lot of the chips and the art, and a lot of the way a lot of the stuff works is uh, pretty similar to the Battle Network games, even though you're using them in very different ways. So I think that's really fun, um, and that's like a, it's a cool way so that it doesn't feel like it's just like just an aesthetic. I feel like it would probably lose us something if they tried to make this a more generic game, because it would make a lot less sense without that kind of background there with it. Um, and uh, it's got uh, it's got some pretty good music in it, and. Um, 
like that, I like the art, and it's just, I don't know, it's, again, it's addictive, and for what it is, it's pretty fun. But, um, it does get super repetitive near the end, it feels like, you know, you're fighting the same characters over and over, or just stronger variants of them, there's a lot of really generic characters to fight in there that are just really boring. You feel like after you kind of get the groove in, you kind of know, like, okay, well, like, there's this enemy coming up again, so I'm just going to use this setup to fight them again, and... Sometimes it doesn't work. Most of the time, though, you'll pretty much have them down. There's only so much variance, so I don't know why they kept repeating the same battles over and over and over. Um, it just artificially extended this game's, you know, playtime, and then there's all these different characters to play as, and it's like, you get most of their navy chips as you play through the campaign anyway, so you, you'd only get their little bits of story, and the story is so secondary and, like, like who gives a shit? In this, that basically uh, you're you're not being propelled forward by the story. You're being propelled by like oh, I'm kind of addicted. I want to play more of these. I want to win. And then once you beat it, it's like that's it. Okay, whatever. And like you don't really feel so much incentive to replay again as a different character because it's like well I'll just you know <laughs> I I can just use them as my main character. Really, there's not a whole lot of difference. I don't. The story's not great enough to make me want to play as them. And it's going to be a lot of repeating the same shit I already had repeated a lot from playing through just once. So, um, yes, it, it is a bit overly long, it's a little bit overly repetitive, and it's very, um, it's very bad at teaching you how to play it. It just kind of says all the stuff that's supposed to happen, and then it's like, there, you get that? And, like, you won't really understand until you play it. Because it's not as complicated as it seems, but, man, they sure made it seem pretty complicated. So... Maybe that could have been, you know, eased you into it a little better. Maybe they could have, or just jumped you right in instead of trying to explain it to you because it's like, I don't, know, I don't know what's going on. And then, like, I don't know. It it, it could have had a, a few changes to make it, make it a bit shorter, make it a little more clear how you play, and then, um, you know, make each of the characters a little more exclusive um, so they don't, you know, have the same kind of stuff to do as each other. Um, that maybe would have been a good idea. Mega Man Battle Chip Challenge. Can you read that? I hope. It's it's uh, it's fine. Look, it, it, I got it for ten bucks. What? Can you read that? I don't know. And like, yeah, it's I don't know. It's fine. It's uh, if you like the Mega Man Battle Network series, this is a fun like spin-off idea of that. And also, if you like deck building games. Um, I think that's the kind of fan that's going to get the most enjoyment out of this game. If you like both of those things. If you like one of those things, you might still find some enjoyment in this. But it's certainly no, you know, it's no great addition to the Mega Man Battle Network series. And it's not the best, you know, deck-building card game either. But it's fun. It's fine. It's addictive. And if you get it for cheaps, it's not too bad. Um, I probably would say maybe stick to unless you're really into the idea. Ten bucks is fine, but for generally speaking, maybe five bucks. It's the kind of game where again you're gonna play it a ton because you're addicted and you're figuring it out, and then you're gonna get kind of bored of it while you're playing it. And by the time you're done, you're gonna be like, I am just I'm done with it, and I don't want to see this thing ever again. Maybe that's just me. What 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 do you guys think? of Mega Man Battle Chip Challenge. Do you think they could have put Battle Network in the name? Maybe? I mean, yeah, it looks a lot like a Battle Network game. I can't complain too much, but come on. Uh, did you like this one? Did you play this before the actual Battle Network games or after? And how do you think it fits in with that? Do you think it is a nice companion piece, or do you think it's more of like a weird spin-off that like doesn't necessarily... This isn't necessarily going to be good just because you like those other ones. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious as to what your opinions and thoughts are. I'd love to see those in the comments. And uh, are there other Mega Man spin-off games I should check out? I don't know. Like, what's some good things you can suggest? You can leave those in the comments, too. You can also like, dislike, subscribe, unsubscribe, all of that stuff. Share whatever you want to do. And put it in your playlist for whatever your weird playlist is. I don't know what kind of playlist you make, but put it in there. Why not? Uh, and, uh, 
You can also check out the written review at hubworldhq.com or the link in the description below. If you still want to check that out, I'm sure I explain things a little better there, but I mean, hopefully I almost have to, right? After this fucking train wreck. Mega Man Battle Network. Mega Man Battleship Challenge. I messed up the name. Goodbye.